Greetings everyone and welcome to the first video of 2020 on this channel. I hope you all had a good one for New Year's and hope you all are going to stick by your resolutions and all that sort of stuff. Me, I've already broken my resolution so that's pretty good. And the first video to kick off the new year is another iWish video. A series in which I buy things off Wish and hang on a second, this one isn't off Wish, it's actually off eBay. So I spent Christmas Eve forever alone browsing eBay for last minute bargains, and I came across this little gem here. Now when I stumbled across this listing, I thought it might have been one of those cash grab things where they have an item really, really stupidly cheap, a lot of people buy it and they just keep the money, and then you have to file a dispute through eBay and stuff like that to get your money back. Well, I thought it was one of them things. Turns out it wasn't. I actually got something. And to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was buying a mobile phone or if I was buying some sort of a beauty product just judging by the title. So the total price of this item was $51.88 Australian, which is equivalent to about 36 US dollars. So we're gonna take that into consideration during this whole entire review that I only paid 50 bucks Australian or 36 USD for this thing. So if it has shit specs, who cares? It, it's cheap enough, it, it doesn't matter. The fact that it was actually stocked in Australia and was promised to be here in like a week after all the Christmas stuff, was really promising. So I went ahead and purchased it. And also it has a notch. So there's two colors, purple and black. I chose black because it was a dollar cheaper. Because I'm a cheapo. So, saved a dollar. We have specifications promised to us, such as Android 8.1, a 6.2 inch display, four gigs of RAM plus 64 gigs of storage, an eight megapixel camera and a 16 megapixel camera. Not sure which one's on the front and which one's on the back, but we're just gonna assume the 16 megapixels on the back and the eight megapixels on the front. And then we also have microdermabrasion, facelifting, whitening, and big eyes. So I'm still not sure. Did I buy a beauty product? Or what did I buy? And then describing the screen itself, it's a 6.2 inch Lu Hyping. Whether it's playing games, watching videos, or reading, the 6.2 inch full Lu Hyping provides immersive visual experience, clear picture quality, and colorful. If anyone can tell me what Lu Hyping means, please let me know down in the comments, please. <laughs> One of the pictures does show that it's got 4G and it does look like it's got a SIM tray slot. So hopefully the back cover doesn't come off and that's actually what I purchased. I don't know, it might be too good to be true, who knows? But the title is Android Smartphone 6.2 inch HD big screen bangs with fingerprint one machine. What have I done? It has a fingerprint unlock and it does show that on the pictures, which would be interesting. The specifications do promise the CPU being an MT6592 octa-core. The GPU has a Mali 400 MP, dual SIM, 6.2 inch, 18 by 9, U-notch HD display at 1660 by 1080. That will be very interesting. Uh, 2G and 3G and everything else here, 4 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage. And the battery promised to us is a 3800 milliamp hour battery. The package contents are quite good, I guess, for the money. We get the smartphone, we get one earphone, just one. That was a Nation's joke. Bless him. We get a phone case, a card needle, a screen cover, a USB cable, the charger, and an English user manual. So for the money, it's not looking too bad. And before we begin, um, this is still happening. And this happened when I was cooking something in the oven and I pulled the tray out and I put the tray on top of a towel on the bench. And then as I was closing the oven door and came back to it, the tray was actually falling off the bench and I went to grab it and I kind of burnt myself there. So I've covered it up with half a bandaid so it doesn't look as um, sus. So um, just ignore that, thanks. All right, and with a shipping time of six days, they shipped it on the 27th, I think. It's now the 4th of January, that's okay. It doesn't look sus at all compared to the last thing we looked at. I can't wait to get into this thing because I, I honestly don't know what to expect for the money. It's, it's crazy, so here, here we go. I'm just gonna start here and just slice away. Or, or is it a black box? It's like a leather box, actually. Hang on a second. Why does it say X21? Didn't we look at an X20 the other day? Oh boy. Now bear in mind, this is not from Wish. This is from eBay, so things are different. But yeah, X21. There's some Chinese writing there, which I'm not too sure what that says, of course. CACP06BL. Okay. Uh, there's a blue sticker on it, though. 6.2. And I think this here from comments says Australian regulations, but I'm not too sure. Look at this box. It's... It's nicely textured. That's that's worth it there. We have a choice of three different things which aren't ticked, but just go with it. Uh, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. No, it's fairly... Well, something's rattling around. That's okay. It's better than those white boxes that the Wish stuff usually comes in. I mean, it's not Wish themselves, it's the sellers, but, you know, this is better. Okay, here we go. 
Shrouded in mystery. I like it. All right. We seem to have a device. All the IMEI information here isn't actually on the box, so it's just put inside the box. Don't know why, they always do this. Well, sometimes. User manual has, oh, it has a staple in it. Wow. If you guys want to pause the video and read all of that, feel free. I bet there's some funny stuff in there. Yep. I'll have a look at it off camera. <laughs> but I can imagine. I can imagine. It might not be that bad after all. Oh no, it's bad. We get a case and a screen protector. Only plastic one, but still, it's better than nothing. This probably will fit an iPhone, to be fairly honest. So, bonus. And the case is here. Now, I'm not too sure what phone this is actually ripping off specifically. It's just kind of one of those, you know, notch, fingerprint, dual camera setup, you know, thingamajiggies. Um... But yeah, I'm not specifically sure on what phone is. It could be an Oppo one. It could be a Xiaomi one. I don't know. Uh, we get the charger here, which is... Uh, well, it's for my country. That's a start. They just have this shipment of adapters that have Russian writing on them. And they just go, yep, just bundle that with it. That's perfectly fine. Personally, I wouldn't plug this in. But uh, if you want to, feel free. And the earphones or earphone is just the usual generic garbage. And we do get a micro USB cable. I think it's... Yeah, it's micro USB. Look like USB-C for a second. And that's it. Oh, there's there's no SIM card needle. Aha. Uh -huh. Little bastard, where are you? Aha. Uh -huh. There it is. Found it. Nice. We got everything. Also, just glue. Unboxing experience wasn't that bad compared to other phones. Okay. Here it is. Kind of excited because this is cheap and, you know... I was going to say, it's frosted. It's kind of like a frost design, but it's not. It's just a protective layer that's just on here. There's the cameras there. Feel free to tell me which is the real one and which one is the fake one. <laughs> Good luck. Um, the fingerprint scanner maybe is a real fingerprint scanner. If it is a real fingerprint scanner, it's the first one I've ever encountered. But... Yeah, real glossy sort of finish. I'll leave this finish on just for the time being, but I just want to see if there's any information printed underneath it. No, nothing printed under there, but it's very, 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 very glossy. So I'll leave that on there until later on when we tear it down. Let's have a look. It's got a tempered glass screen protector on here, already installed. I actually think there's a notch. Wow, okay, well, um, let's quickly go around it. We have the volume rockers here. At the bottom here, we have two screws holding it together. Just like the iPhone, except you use a standard screwdriver bits, which is fine. We have these speaker grills, probably one speaker, I would say. We have a little bit of foam covering the power button just in case it gets switched on during transit. So that's pretty nice, a little nifty thing that they add. We have the micro USB port as well as the headphone jack, which is always appreciated. And also at the top of the device here, we have the earpiece as well as the front facing camera. So that should be the eight megapixel one, but we will see very shortly. And the construction of the phone appears to be plastic. And the rear cover of the phone is made of plastic as well. And with the phone being a fingerprint magnet, as well as the tempered glass already being applied, I can just safely assume that the front is glass, and it is, which means that there are scratches at a level 6 and deeper grooves at a level 7. I finally said it. There you go. Now with the device being mostly made of plastic, Plastic is plastic, and plastic will burn over an open flame, so please don't do any of that. And with all the Jerry Rig Everything quotes out of the way, let's power this thing on. Now, before I make any accusations on this thing, just remember, this was 36 US. So, if it has the wrong specs, it has the wrong specs. Whatever, it really doesn't matter. Still, I wouldn't recommend using this as a daily driver, but, you know, maybe for some sort of games or something you could use it for. I don't know, we will check it out and see. Also, the bezels look really big, but that's okay. Alrighty, folks, and here is the moment of truth. Let's see what it does. It's, it's dead? No. Why are you dead for? Fuck. Okay, so there's an update. Uh, the moment of truth has been ruined because it doesn't power on. I shall try and resolve this as quickly as possible. Okay, I honestly thought this thing was dead. I had it on charge for about half an hour and it didn't do anything. I held the power button down for about 20 seconds and then the battery icon showed. So, proud victory. So now let's go ahead and see if it actually powers on this time. I haven't tried it. Hopefully it does. 
Wow, would you look at that? I'm pretty sure we've seen this before. <laughs> Yes. Yes, we certainly have. We have certainly seen this before. There's a red Porsche on there because it makes it go faster. Um, there is legit... There's a notch, man. Nice. I want to just see the last phone. Oh, no, they've actually moved it down slightly because on the uh, iPhone 11 clone, the uninstall was actually under the notch, so they've kind of made it look nicer. Wow! Well, this already seems to be better value than the iPhone 11 Pro Max clone thing that I had a look at the other day, and this was only 36 US. Also, I got a refund on that item. I just literally messaged Wish and said, I don't like it, and they gave me a full refund. So thank you, Wish. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, um, here it is. It, it, it's here. Um, and it looks exactly the same as the X20 Pro. Backup and restore, browser, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, downloads, face like all oh, the usual bullshit. The touch is a little funny. That's a little strange. Maybe it could be the tempered glass screen protector. Maybe it's stuffing around with it. Maybe. I'm not too sure. Regardless, we can still play around with it and all that sort of stuff. The screen resolution through the camera actually doesn't look half bad. Compared to the iPhone 11 Pro clone that I had a look at, that was horrible. But this actually kind of looks somewhat usable. Won't hold my hope up yet, but it looks good. So jumping straight into settings, obviously we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, SIM cards, and do we have no, no NFC or anything like that? Of course. Yeah, the touch is a little strange, but I think it's the tempered glass screen protector on here. Uh, mirror vision and all that sort of stuff in display. Actually, see the wallpapers. All right, so picking a wallpaper, there's several to choose from, actually. There's some very P30 Pro looking ones here, I think. They're iPhone ones. That looks quite nice, actually. I'm keeping the Porsche. Nice. And of course, in sound and notification, we have the sound enhancement, which is the best which is the best ordinance. It didn't want to work then. Um, but yeah, usual stuff here. Nothing out of the ordinary. Let's go through apps real quickly. Um, someone actually commented to run an antivirus test on this. So I'm actually going to do that. Probably download Malwarebytes and try that. Uh, launcher 3 appears to be obviously the launcher. Uh, network location looks a little dodgy. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it's probably some more in system. But yeah, we'll see. I'll run the antivirus test and see if anything comes up. Uh, storage in USB. 747 meg used of 64 gigs. I mean, if it's 8 gig, it's still fine for 36 US. 8 gig is fine. If it's 1 gig and 8 gig, it's for the money. Like, why not? And free shipping too, which is just great. Uh, battery. What is with these batteries sometimes? We had the weirdo reading on the Note 10 clone. Then we had the 200 milliamp hours on the iPhone 11 Pro clone. And now we have that. It's got 29% left. So that should be plenty before I have to put it on life support again. Uh, memory is 1 gig, total memory 4 gig, average use 26% free, 3 gig. As I said, if it's running 1 gig of RAM, I will be happy. Alright, go on, we've got to see security, come on. Screen lock, but where is the fingerprint? Oh, there it is, there it is. Never mind, okay. Um, is this actually going to friggin' work? Alright. Rolling the fingerprint. I have high hopes. I have high hopes. Because this is taking longer than usual. Okay. Alright, here we go. Okay. Try another finger. Bullshit. Bullshit. We have a working fingerprint scanner to make sure no bullshit. Okay, here we go. Right there. Okay. There. Sorry, giving you the middle finger. I can't believe it. 
after all this time, it actually works. We have a working one. That is truly remarkable. Look, face unlock would probably be the same thing, just looks at my face and then registers it and unlocks, but I'm gonna try it anyways, why not? Yep, face unlock works perfectly. Otherwise, everything else is pretty normal, so I come to about phone, and we have the X21 Plus. So it's actually technically better than the iPhone 11 Pro clone. I would be surprised if it's actually using the same motherboard. Remember the unused flex ribbon connections on the iPhone 11 Pro clone motherboard? That's what this fingerprint is actually connected to. That's just my assumption anyways. Um, X21 Plus, Android 8.1. Let's go for the Easter egg. Zarty's audio. Yay! Wait a second. That's not the Oreo Easter egg. That's the marshmallow one. That's fair. Baseband, kernel, and build number all look pretty much normal, I guess. Nothing that I can recognize that's out of the ordinary or tells us anything else. But otherwise, the fingerprint actually works. All right, so I'm going to populate this SIM tray here. Well, it's a little bit of a different one. So nano SIM and SD card. I think you can put another... Yeah, you can put two SIMs in there if you wanted to, but it's only 3G, so what do you expect? All right, yeah, and with a SIM card and SD card populated in this device, it comes up with 4G, and it does say 4G within the mobile settings, but I'll see if I can toggle it somewhere else. And I've just tried two SIM cards, and they both come up with HSPA, which is 3G, which... That's what I expected anyways, so that's perfectly fine. Oh, of course, the serial number is 0123456789 ABCDF as usual. All right, I'm going to give this a call and see what the call quality sounds like, because a lot of people ask me, do I test the call quality on this thing? So I'm going to test that and see how it fares out. All right, testing the call quality, it's not too bad, to be honest. It's nothing special, but it does work. It does make phone calls, and I've just checked for available networks, and I'm only getting... 3G and not 4G. So that confirms that one. At this point in time, at the moment, the price is what is making me go, this thing is actually quite good. Fair enough, it's not the most responsive thing, but that's probably because of all the fingerprints and this tempered glass screen protector, which I'd probably take off and replace it with the plastic one. It does work. It actually has a built-in fingerprint scanner. The screen resolution doesn't look half bad. So I'm eager to continue testing to see what this thing can do. So let me connect to my Wi-Fi. I'm going to try the YouTube test, see what this thing can do. Okay, so it's actually been quite a while. I've downloaded uh, games and stuff like that on here to make sure that that's all ready to go. Um, I took the tempered glass screen protector off, and it seems to be much better now. So that was causing the issue. Simple fix. Someone actually recommended to use the YouTube app last time, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, also, if you have not seen this video, please watch this video because it addresses a couple of frequently asked questions and all that sort of stuff. So if you have not seen that, I'll cut it up here as well. For you to go have a squiz at it. I want to see it. I want to see it kick in the 5G. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We're, uh, we're rocking 5G on this thing. It actually doesn't seem to be lagging that much. You know what? Yeah. They were close enough. It's not too bad, to be fairly honest. Right, still. So, YouTube test is acceptable at 480p. This runs quite fine, to be fairly honest. All right, here's a video in 480p. Uh, this is supposed to be a 4K 60fps video, but just to give you an idea of the colours and all that sort of stuff that's displayed on the screen, look, it's not terribly bad, to be honest. I'm wondering what the screen res is actually going to be, but it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not the best display in the world, but it's certainly far from the iPhone 11 Pro clone that we had a look at. Alright, so we may as well do the speaker test now with Mick Gordon's Skull Hacker from the 2016 Doom soundtrack. I've got it at a pretty heavy part, so we'll see what volume it reaches on my little meter here. Not quite as loud as I had hoped for, and not exactly the best quality speaker, but it's $36, man. It's fine. It, it will do. It will it will do the job perfectly fine. Alright, so what about gaming, you say? What about what about gaming? Can this thing game? Well, let's go ahead and try Minecraft and see what that brings us to. 
Okay, so while I'm not the best at uh, Minecraft Mobile, uh, uh, I, I need to see what I'm doing. Okay, right, I, I kind of see what I'm doing. It kind of, it's smooth. Look at that. It's kind of smooth. Kind of. When you get down to there, it kind of lags a little bit, but it's not that bad. You could definitely play this on here. Look at that shit, man. That's actually fucking good. That's more than capable, man. Definitely. 100%. If I knew how to play this properly, it would be okay. Go watch my iPhone 11 Pro clone, and you'll notice a massive difference. My God. All right, well, there you have it. Let's try Need for Speed. And this is Need for Speed. No limits. Yeah, yeah, tutorial. I know, I know. I play this all the time. It kind of sounds like the sound's chopping a little bit. And also, if you want to know, PUBG and Call of Duty, the latest one that's been released on mobile, um, doesn't appear in the Play Store, and if you try to install it via another link, it just says that it's not supported on your device. So, I mean, you've still got Minecraft and this and whatever other games that people are into. I don't know. There we go, Nitro. But, man, this is definitely more than playable. This is fine. So verdict for Need for Speed as well, it passes. So the YouTube test was a pass. The gaming test was a pass. The fingerprint sensor was also a pass as well. I'm going to go ahead and try the camera. So we'll go ahead and open it up uh, to make phone calls. Nope. Oh, fine then. I'll allow it. All right. Uh, obviously, because I'm recording at night time, uh, once again, I'll do this tomorrow, and I'll splice it in right about now. Okay, so this is a bit of a strange one. This is the front camera here. And it's actually doing 60 FPS at the moment. Now, it's gonna sound like a bit of bullshit here, but no, it's actually doing 60 FPS. When I go into darker areas, it changes down to 22 FPS, but currently out in the sunlight, it's at 60 FPS. Don't ask how, but it does. <laughs> I'm lost for words. I started editing the camera bits, and then when I seen it was actually doing 60 FPS, I was like, no way, no way. And uh, it's true, it does. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so we're testing out the rear camera quality of the X21 Plus. This is with everything on, autofocus, fine quality, all that sort of stuff. Hey, he's having a good time. Hopefully the video quality is gonna be reasonable. The front camera seems okay, kind of. Got some pink here just to see how this turns out. I don't think there's any um, wind cut either, but yeah, so be it. Just do a quick pan. That's fair. Alrighty, so usually at this point in time I usually say I have not done the camera test, I don't know what it looks like, and continue on with rambling. However, this time around I have done the camera test and I know what it looks like. The back camera is not the best, a little bit washed out, you know, pretty average. Uh, there's also a dot that just, hang on, let me try and get it. There you go. Though it's very hard to see, there is a black dot that's always just there. I may have done this when tearing this down, I don't know, but it, there's always a black dot when you take a photo. So throughout those sample photos that I've done and video, there's always just a black dot. So, but the rear camera is not the greatest thing. It's the front camera on this thing that I'm actually quite surprised about. 
because it pulls 60 FPS at 640x480. While it's not the absolute greatest, and it's only got a 4 meg bitrate as well, I've put open camera on here. I achieved a 1080p test video with a 6 meg bitrate at 60 FPS with this. Um, unfortunately, this was inside and not outside, so it doesn't look as appealing, but I was able to do it. So with open camera, you could possibly toy around with the cameras and all that sort of stuff and make it somewhat more usable. I tried it with the rear camera and tried to bump up things and all that sort of stuff, and it kind of still looks the same, but the sample ones that you've just seen, that pretty much says it all for the cameras. But to have 60 FPS come out of the front one, yeah, okay, no worries. <laughs> No worries at all. I forgot to mention the modes that are in this camera app as well. Like there's face beauty, the panorama, all that sort of stuff. All the usual basic crap. There's also HDR on here as well, which does toggle on and off automatically, which is kind of good, I guess. Well, camera wise, that's pretty much all I have to talk about. So let's continue on. All right, well, let's go ahead and put a couple of apps on this thing. I'm going to do malware bytes just to see what comes up. And I'm going to do a bunch of the CPU application specification thingamajiggies just to see what is exactly running in this thing. Obviously, it's not four gig of RAM and an octa-core, but it's got to be, you know, maybe one gig of RAM and eight gig of storage or something like that. So uh, let me go ahead and do all that and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, malware bytes is installed. So let's go ahead and run a scan and see what happens. Yes, it is 3 a.m. and I'm fairly tired, but I'm okay. Uh, that's what happened. <laughs> um, so the first one is Riskware, and that's an FOTA provider, uh, over the air provider maybe. Uh, then we have a wireless update, which is a Trojan downloader, so that's quite interesting. And then we have Upgrade Sys, which is actually Riskware. So there you go, there is actually malware on them. It might be different for other phones and stuff like that. Just on a whim here, they might be false positives. Still, this is what you risk buying a no-name device. Okay, well, I can't exactly remove them from malware bytes. You could just launch an ADB command prompt and then just like remove them manually if you wanted to. There's a way to do it. Um, but otherwise, this doesn't remove them because um, it, it's the system apps. Uh, but yeah, look, you, you do take a chance on these things. Whoever did suggest running an antivirus scan, uh, thank you for actually suggesting that because we we're just on the uh, context that these things do have viruses and yeah, whatever sort of thing, but yes, they do actually have viruses and yeah, the wireless update that just didn't work the whole time that I've tried it on multiple devices, that's been a Trojan the whole time. And I trust Malwarebytes when I used to work in a computer shop, that's the first thing we used all the time to get rid of viruses, so I would believe that it's still quite worthy in today's standards. So there you go. That's very interesting. And here you go. I've removed all the malware using the command prompt. You just go to ADB and type in like ADB shell and then remove packages and you go through and remove whichever one you want to remove and that's it. Done. So now this would be perfectly fine to use. I've rebooted it a couple of times and yeah, it's fine. So just thought I'd share that little update with you all. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and see what the specs are in this thing. We'll start with Antutu first, because that's the usual suspects. You never know what's going on. So we have X21+, Plus, X21+, Plus, X21+, Plus, MT6592, Android 8.1, uh, Mali 400 MP, 480 by 996 the same resolution screen as the iPhone clone. Hmm, okay. Uh, rear camera, 16 megapixel, RAM, 4 gig, 64 gig, yeah, and Tutu's lying. Four cores there. The display is 4.6 inches, yeah, okay. Uh, multi-touch test, let's do this, because you just never know. Only 5 point. 5 point multi-touch is still good, though, for a $36 device. The battery capacity in Antutu is 1,000 milliamp hours, but I must say, though, while recording this video, I've been recording for a couple of hours now, and the battery percentage actually hasn't gone down that much. I've had it on life support here and there, but overall, it's not dying as fast as the other usual suspects. Um, Android 8.1, and the SDK version is 8.1. Thanks, guys. And, as usual, a whole bunch of sensors that aren't supported. Alright, let's try CPU-Z and see what it says. MediaTek MT6580 with four cores. Fair, that's not too bad. X21 Plus, X21 Plus, MT6592. Okay, 4.6 inches, this is the screen, yep. 480 by 996. Total RAM, 4 gig, 
and internal storage 64 yeah okay but we'll see i'm pretty sure it's marshmallow running on this thing because the easter egg changed from oreo to marshmallow one of the thermals is just android 8.1 doesn't even have a temperature it's just android 8.1 all right well the last one should tell us what's going on if it's installed it is an x21 plus x21 plus x21 plus mt6580 android 6 api level is 23 which is marshmallow i mean it says android m so that is all good uh system on chip is 6580 Total internal memory, 16 gig. I don't have my SD card in, by the way. That's actually not too bad. All right, RAM, one gig. Okay, so you're probably like, oh, okay. Uh, it's not that great. One gig of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, a 6.2 inch display with a notch, mm -hmm. unknown battery capacity, and all the stuff it did come with in the box, it's already justified its price, 100%. Yeah, 480 by 939, such a weird resolution. And it's 4.4 inches as well, by the way, but that's okay. 100 milliamp hours, the same as the iPhone clone. I've got the iPhone 11 Pro Max clone next to me, so I'm going to compare the two in a second. Okay, so there is something going on. When I try to access cameras, it just crashes. Okay, I've tried about four different apps, and they all come up with the same thing about cameras. 16 megapixel for the rear, and 8 megapixel for the front. Only time will tell when I take the photos tomorrow, and uh, you've already seen them, so you already know what's going on here. As far as I can tell, supposedly it does have a 16 megapixel camera for the rear and a 8 megapixel for the front. Okay, so now I just wanted to compare both of these. The left one being the iPhone 11 Pro clone and this one being the X21 Plus, I think that's its name. Putting them side by side, you can actually see that the X21 Plus is slightly bigger. The bezels are bigger. The screen is about the same size, but the bezels are just a little bit bigger on this. So that's what makes it bigger. But like size wise, the X21 Plus is considerably thinner. The buttons are all on one side on the iPhone clone, but the power is on the right and the volume rocker is on the left side. But even the top here, the location of the micro USB port and headphone jack is actually slightly different. So it's probably a different motherboard in here to be fairly honest. Weight wise, I'd say this is probably a little bit lighter than this one. But this one was just a heap of shit, so let's just disregard that already. Okay, we'll talk about the elephant in the room. The fact that it does have viruses and malware and all that sort of stuff. Okay, that's a bit of a letdown. Fair enough. If you know what you're doing, you could get rid of them, and you've potentially got a cheap-ass phone on your hands that you could use for emulation. You could use it as a project. You could use it for something, anything. For 36 bucks, I mean, I don't know exactly where else you're going to find it for that price. You may have to do a little bit of searching on eBay and all that sort of thing to find the exact same model that I came across. My one was called the Intelligent Phone with Bangs One Machine and all that sort of stuff. If you were actually interested in buying this, I mean, battery-wise seems okay. Uh, the screen resolution, although it's the same resolution as the iPhone 11 Pro clone, it's better. Maybe it has more DPI, I'm not too sure. It's just cameras and battery at this point in time that I don't know about personally. So we'd have to tear it down and see what we can find. But otherwise, if you just wanted a cheap ass phone that does 3G and you knew how to get rid of malware that's already installed on here, then just like give it a clean slate. It's a good budget phone. I mean, you, you are better off going with Xiaomi or Oppo or Nokia or, or any of those offerings or whatever. Obviously, because they're more better brands and all that sort of stuff, you know what you're going to be buying, you know the reviews and all that sort of stuff. You are taking a chance with this one. If you want to use this as a project thing, as I said, like an emulation thing, get a controller from eBay and build some sort of like little retro machine thing. I, I don't know. You could do many things with this. So I give this a, a pretty good thumbs up, man. It's one of the first clone devices I've actually had a look at that hasn't really sucked that bad. The fingerprint sensor works on it, which is amazing. And I can't, I want to see the hardware that's actually in this thing. Well, it's kind of hard because it is a clone of something, but it's not a clone of something specific. So it's kind of a mix of an iPhone and like something, I don't know, it looks like an Oppo, the back of it. Or a shout, I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments what this does specifically remind you of. Um, but yeah, I think I've covered everything I can on this device. It's just surprising for the money, man. Usually I'd be paying a hundred bucks plus to, you know, look at a piece of shit. I've paid $36 US or 50 bucks Australian and I've got this with a case and a screen protector and a cable and good value. Just sucks that it's got malware on it. But just command prompt it. 
all right, well, I'm going to tear this thing apart. I was considering doing it in another video, but I may as well do it all in one video and everyone can just say, God, it goes for so long. I mean, it's like 3.30 in the morning, man. What, what else am I supposed to do? The speaker was kind of loud that time. Oh, well, it's still average. Alrighty, before we get into the tear down here, these two screws are fake. <laughs> I only realized that when I stuck a Phillips head screwdriver in there and I started to twist and I was like, oh, that's not doing anything. So, yeah, that's fine. So, I assume that I would just go ahead and pry around the device and that should release it. I think. I'm going to be especially careful because the flex room for this is probably just somewhere here. So I've just got to be really careful on how I do this. It doesn't help that I'm really tired as well, but that's okay. I'll just I'll soldier on. Well, this was an interesting one. It's held together with bubble gum or something. All right. So yeah, the back cover is literally just held on by clips and this adhesive stuff, which is just yeah but it's all come off in one go also i was wrong about the back camera when i first was having a look at the cameras i thought it was the bottom one that was the real one so i done goofed myself here is the innards we have the battery here which is actually taking up the full space of the device which is quite good We've got multiple screws holding the frame down so i'd have to take that off before i get into it any further uh the little camera here doesn't have any OIS, but it's a pretty big one compared to some of the others that we have seen over the past. And most importantly, our fingerprint sensor right here. I think it's just connected. Uh, there it is. That's it. There it is. That is our fingerprint sensor right there. He is real. We see that there's a manufacturing date of 2018. The 12th of 2018 so it's a year old but you know it's it's still fine the battery is not serviceable as i said earlier it does fit in the frame but looking at it now it kind of doesn't but it's still it's close enough i'm gonna go ahead and remove all the screws and we'll see what we can find okay taking off all the screws reveals that we can just pull off the frame like that so we have the loudspeaker just here that's actually a pretty fairly good sized one to be honest so that was screwed in there for a reason, so I'm going to screw that back in. There appears to be some sort of metal frame going along in here, just along there, and then you've got some little joints joining it together. So the structural integrity would be questionable, but I'd say it'd be quite fine, to be honest. I'm going to go ahead and just try out the battery ever so slightly. So the battery is in its own little housing. That's a first, because the flex ribbon's under it, so that, that kind of makes sense. Okay, that was a bit of a battle with the battery, but all we have here is a barcode and numbers. That's it. Well, in that regards, I'm unsure of the battery capacity. I honestly do not know. Um, going off those numbers, I'll have to do a bit of Googling and see if I come up with anything. Now, obviously, I can't disconnect the battery because, well, it's kind of soldered on, but I can try my absolute best here to pull up this tape to reveal a nice little sticker that will be very interesting to see what it says. Okay, the sticker here says a Q1880A 3G1 plus 16. So I think that pretty much tells us everything right there, folks. It has one gig of RAM and 16 gigs of storage. Another unused flex connector just there. That's probably for something else, I'm not too sure. I just want to go ahead and see if I can lift up the board ever so slightly. I just want to see what's underneath just this part here. Yeah, I can't really get underneath the board there, but it's nothing much. It's just the bare frame just underneath there for some sort of thermal cooling for the chipset and all that sort of stuff here. But the micro USB port's just there. Earpiece is just behind the micro USB port. Might be able to just show you guys. You can just see it ever so slightly just in there. We have the front camera as well. He's just a little guy, but supposedly he's an 8 megapixel little guy. And that there is a 16 megapixel sensor. I think that's as pretty much as far as I'm going to go with a teardown. So if I went any further, I may risk 
pulling these flex ribbons out and I kind of still need it to function. But at this stage in time, I know what the specs are and I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, well, it's back together and everything works and I've installed a ton of stuff as you can see, but I think I know the specifications except the battery. I'm not too sure of the battery capacity because I did Google the numbers that I did find on there and it doesn't show anything except an Honor 6X battery, which is like 3200 milliamp hours, which I don't think this thing has. However, while using this and gaming and all that sort of stuff for this video, it didn't drop that drastically like the other clones, as I did say. So I'm going to give it a generous 2500 milliamp hours. That's just my estimate capacity on this. I could be wrong. I don't know but that's just what I'm thinking. And I've tried like Accu battery, Ampere and all that sort of stuff and it doesn't show the capacity. So unfortunately I don't know in that regards, but otherwise for the millionth time, this is $36 USD. And for that money, you get all of this here. So feel free to pause the video and read through all of this because this is what you get. All right, so the pros and cons of this device. The pros are, well, a quite usable device. It does play games, battery life isn't too bad, cameras are somewhat acceptable, it has a notch, and it has a headphone jack, so that's pretty good. Screen resolution isn't too bad overall, it's not a terrible phone for the money. The price, that's what I think is good about it. The cons though, yeah, it's made out of plastic, it does have viruses running on it, you can clear them out though, so if you can do that, then perfect. And just a couple of things here and there that just don't make it super perfect. But otherwise, for the money, it's much better than some of the shit that we've got off Wish in the past. So that's all I can say, really. That says it all there. I have enjoyed looking at this device and playing around with it and all that sort of stuff. And I hope you guys have also enjoyed coming along the journey with me and having a look at this thing and all that sort of stuff. But it is usable. It's not too bad at all. Now, if I haven't covered everything, please let me know down in the comments. And if you want me to do anything else with this device, please let me know down in the comments because I don't know if I've covered absolutely everything I need to cover, but I've tried to be as comprehensive as I can about this device. And I think I've pulled all of that off and showed you guys everything that this $36 device can do from eBay. And with all that being said and done, I think we are absolutely done with this video. It has gone on too long, and I know you guys are going to jump in the comments and tell me how long it's gone for, and I ramble and all that sort of stuff. Well, I've tried to be as comprehensive as I can about this device. There are timestamps in the description as well, so you can skip through and see whatever you want to see. But otherwise, I think I'm absolutely done with it. I still can't get over the fact that this device actually features a real fingerprint scanner. That's just crazy. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching this long ass video. And if you have any comments or queries or questions or anything like that, please let me know down in the comments below. And I'll try and answer some of the comments and questions as best as I can. But otherwise, stay tuned because we have more stuff that we need to look at, more clones and all that sort of good stuff. Thanks a ton for watching this video. I do appreciate it. And as always, be good people, take care, and I'll see you in the next video, which I'm not sure what that'll be, but it'll be something tech related. Nice. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.